il pilota dell'Alfa Romeo tedesca che sarà brillante secondo. Giunti con la GTA deve difendere il suo ha già stravigliato tutti al suo debutto italiano nella carriera. Ripongono la loro fiducia nella GTA. Il triestino Maria, le GTA della Ostenta partono al comando. So we often get asked at what point we started designing the GTA. Uh, truth is, we immediately after the Quadrifoglio launch in 2016 continued to play with ideas of where else to take this uh, amazing car. So it was actually over the course of many, many years that we started sketching on a more extreme version of the Giulia. And um, for the 110th anniversary, it seemed to be the right time to actually show this creation. Uh, when we thought about the anniversary, we wanted to bring something very unique on the market. We wanted to celebrate this, and the best celebration that you can do is to bring a new car for the Alfisti, for the customers, for all the ones who are found in love with, the, with Alfa Romeo. So we, we tried to create a link between the current ranch that we have, with the Giulia and the Stelvio, and the, the, the history that we had. So really this car, more than the celebration of the anniversary, is a gift. It's a gift for 500 customers. It's a gift for 500 people who love Alfa Romeo. So carbon fiber is a material that we excessively used on the GTA and M for lightweighting. So the whole front part of the car is carbon fiber. A lot of the carbon fiber you don't even see. The hood, for example, is carbon fiber. The fender are carbon fiber. The whole front fascia is carbon fiber, but it's painted, so it's not really visible. But then there is a lot of exposed parts of carbon fiber, the aero pieces. Uh, we also have the wheel arch extension in the back, the rear wing. Those are exposed carbon fiber pieces. We actually like very much working with carbon fiber. It's a material that can almost do anything. But the two differences you need to understand when working with carbon fiber and you really have to pay attention to in the design phase is what will become aesthetic and therefore will be shown and what is non-aesthetic. And you can see when you look at a real performance car, even all the way up to Alfa Romeo racing a Formula One car, a group that we worked hand in hand with and helped us tremendously with the development of these parts, we discovered very much the impact, the aesthetic impact and the difference between aesthetic carbon fiber and non-aesthetic carbon fiber. So we had to make deliberate choices and made sure that the parts that were exposed really uh, were aesthetic. And what that means is basically you really have to pay attention to the uh, orientation of the carbon fiber weave, for example, whereas when you paint it later you can't just do it uh, any way you want. So there's really differences in, in how you have to approach it, but carbon fiber is a wonderful material to work with. So when we designed the Giulia GTA, when we had it in the studio, you can imagine that our walls were filled with reference images of the original GTA. And one thing you can't escape looking at these images were some of these iconic uh, liveries. And what I really liked about them is they had a completely different solution than you saw on maybe other brands at that time with this kind of dip nose. And the dip nose basically was done back in the day to identify the driver. So the car either had a complete nose in white or in light blue or in okra and this kind of uh, burnt yellow. And that's something we thought was really, really cool. So when the car was done, when the GTA was done, we thought this was, it would be a nice opportunity for our customers, if they so wish, to also apply this kind of historic livery. So while the car in itself is not referring to the GTA with, with retro design or anything, but just the nameplate, we thought with the liveries we allow our customers to actually create this nod to history, to actually make that connection to the original GTA and apply some of these really truly iconic liveries.
I'm Fabio Iavacca. I'm the head of product marketing uh, for Alfa Romeo in the EMEA market. We decided to uh, achieve 540 horsepower because it was enough to our uh, target. It was a power to weight ratio. And so uh, reducing the weight, uh, we had the possibility to reach uh, uh, the performance that we uh, wanted uh, without adding too much power. Also because uh, the idea was to keep the rear wheel drive. On the GTAM we have a specific aerodynamic package. Uh, we have a front splitter that is uh, like on, uh, on the Quadrifoglio and like on the GTA, uh, an electric actuated uh, splitter so it, it, uh, it could uh, go down over a certain speed but you can also adjust it uh, in uh, what we call uh, the X direction so in the front of the car uh, manually to increase uh, the area and the downforce on the front of the car. In the same way, on the back of the car, we have uh, this huge <laughs> rear wing that is adjustable. So the central part uh, could be inclined in a different uh, position, uh, adjustable manually from, uh, from the customer. And we will give uh, some guideline to, to the customer, uh, depending from the, the circuit where the, the customer will uh, drive for a, a track day or something like that, uh, giving the aero setup that is uh, the ideal one for that circuit. We worked uh, on uh, the weight reduction on the GTA M and the GTA, working from every single particular of the car. Uh, if you look uh, outside the car, the front fascia of uh, the GTA and the GTA M are totally revised for the aerodynamic uh, needs, uh, but are made also in carbon fiber, so reducing uh, the weight. The pieces of the car has been uh, redesigned. For example, the windscreen of the GTA and GTA M uh, is uh, thinner than the standard quadrifoglio, reducing the weight. And on the GTA M is uh, really visible the fact that you are removing the rear seats, uh, the rear bench, uh, adding uh, uh, the, the roll bar, the roll cage with the six point harness uh, and uh, the monocoque uh, seats uh, from Sabelt uh, that are reducing the weight uh, compared to the, the Spark One. Working with Sauber is a great opportunity for us to have uh, uh, them on board uh, on, on such a project. So uh, we are involved in the Formula One with Sauber, uh, as you know, uh, but having their knowledge uh, and their uh, um, uh, experience uh, on, uh, on the GTA project uh, is an added value. So we worked with them also in in-wheel uh, wind tunnel to adjust uh, the aerodynamics uh, on both GTA and GTA-M uh, to achieve a better downforce uh, on, uh, on both cars.